Alrighty, so if that 16 minute construction update didn't tire you out, we have another one. So this is part two. Part two is pretty exciting. I think it's really unique. Um, Jasm uh, from YouTube, you gotta go subscribe to her. There's gonna be a link at the end of this video to go to her channel. Thanks so much to her for helping me do this. Um, this was a fantastic idea. So we measured the tunnel using our bodies. Um, so we, in kind of like a standing, sitting kind of like position, measured, you know, how many of us could fit across the actual just open part of the tunnel, not the entire tunnel, just the open part. And we got between 13 and 14 people wide. So um, that'll be in this video, um, along with some extra signs on the tunnel side, Windseeker side of the field, because you don't get a lot of that. So to start it right off the bat, we have some trees that have some markings on them for removal in the tunnel side of the area. And we have some trees that have already recently been removed. Um, and they kind of align for the Imolin slash dive loop out of this tunnel. So that's really exciting. So here's some of the trees that were removed. And this looks like a very perfect area for the Imolin loop support or whatever kind of inversion or um, element ends up going in this area. But yeah, as you can see, it kind of aligns perfectly for kind of like an inversion coming out of there. So I think that's definitely going to be a footer in this area come later on this year. Um, and yeah, so I'm trying to think of what would be better, a dive loop or an Imolin loop. So these were just kind of laying there, so we thought we'd take a funny shot. Um, that's Jasm from YouTube. Again, you gotta go subscribe to her. She's got some really great content and history updates that I absolutely love. They're great content and very unique for Canada's Wonderland. Um, so here's some shots of kind of like the new electrical that they did in this area. Um, and it's really exciting that there's some uh, cool electrical on this side of the field. I wonder if it's going to be for fog and lighting and all that. Um, for the exit of the tunnel, that would be sick coming out of the tunnel and going into the tunnel with some fog. Can you imagine that diving into like water um, with a fog element? It would be like you don't know where you're going. That would be absolutely sick. So here we were kind of like trying to measure it with feet. We got around like 24 feet, I think, in terms of measurement, which adds up to like what Google measured. Um, but this is where we start, you know. <laughs> This is hilarious. People were like walking by, like look, um, laughing at us, like wondering what we were doing. Cause we had this tripod that Jasm has set up and <laughs> we're literally leaning against the, um, the, the tunnel like fence there. So two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, <laughs> seven. <laughs> eight, nine, 10. I miscounted, didn't I? It's actually at 12, 13 there. I did, I miscounted the first part. So it's like 12, 13 or 14. You guys count on your own because obviously I messed that up. Obviously I have no idea how to count. Um, but yeah, so this is where I'm gonna get back into that conversation. Everyone knows I'm throwing around this giga dive term and this giga dive possibility. And I just want to talk about it a little more. I understand both sides of the argument. It is probably not going to happen. And I also understand my side of the argument where there, there are signs about it. So here we have Leviathan's pullout. And as you saw, we're going to measure that compared to our current pullout in the tunnel that doesn't have a support. So there's no supports in the tunnel, just connected to concrete. I want to compare that part to Leviathan's, which is actually really interesting. So here I have what I was talking about in part one of the construction update. So as you can see, you have that turnaround into the lift hill. And again, it comes the lift hill length in the next clip you'll see matched up perfectly to what I actually thought, which would suggest the possibility of a much larger dive coaster or whatever coaster this is going to be than that to Val Raven. Um, so ours comes out at about 105 meters, which is crazy um, in terms of um, length. So that gives us a lot of room if the incline is your typical incline on a dive coaster to be a really tall dive coaster um, or wing coaster, whatever it ends up being. I mean, wing coasters have really long lift hills as well. Um, but I really do think this is going to be a dive coaster. Everyone knows that I've thought that for like a month now. Um, but yeah, so here's Leviathan's pullout. It is about 35, 36 meters um, for the non-support part of the tunnel, um, which is really interesting. So 30, 35 meters for a pullout uh, on this um, dive, or sorry, this Giga Coaster at uh, Canada's Wonderland. So I'm gonna compare that to the 
the pullout on this dive coaster. And that does paint a picture for us. So the pullout, just the pullout, not the tunnel length, as people know, just what's currently in the tunnel, that the tunnel's actually longer than 45 meters. But the current track installed in the tunnel with no supports is 45 meters long. That's crazy, right? Um, so I, I just wanted to touch on this again because um, it, it's super interesting. Like, is Does this mean that we're gonna have a large, you know, a much larger coaster than Val Raven, or is it just, you know, a tunnel, which I don't think they would invest a lot of money in the tunnel for no reason. I think it means something, but yeah. So out of this video, I hope it was like exciting. I know it's a bit small, but at least we know that 10 across seating could potentially work on this coaster. So I'm predicting if it is a dive coaster, it's gonna be between eight and 10 seating. And I honestly am starting to think that this coaster has the potential to be a giga dive coaster. Why not um, just blow this dive coaster, if it's a dive coaster, out of the water and have a park, first one in the world with two gigas. The first park with two giga coasters. Do I think it's 100% possible? No, of course not. I'm not dumb. I'm, I'm not dumbfounded. Like, I understand that this is like, out of this world and it, the possibilities of it are probably pretty slim but there are signs that suggest this could be a dive coaster and i don't want to overlook those neither because we don't know yet teasing hasn't ultimately started yet on the actual coaster itself we only have a teaser for like the possibility of an area so this is all really exciting and as you know i'm obviously going to keep you guys um up to date on anything I see. I'm at the park every day. I just don't want to miss anything. It's just such an exciting time for Canada's Wonderland. It's about time we get a new big coaster. It's been seven years, so it's our time to shine. Um, do you guys think this coaster has the potential to win uh, the Golden Ticket Award in 2019? Or do you think Carowinds is going to have that hands down? I personally think Carowinds is going to have it hands down if it's a Mac double launch, but who knows? Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and share it. Have a good one. Bye.